let's come back to ape to man. The fact is, if we can show that there is no connection between the apes and man, if there is no missing link here, the fact is that you just have the animals that show up and you have man that shows up relatively recently ago, the fact is you got a big problem in the evolutionary theory. Let's talk about one of the evidences that you scientists have actually found, and that's the DNA, and specifically the mitochondrial DNA of women all over the world. What's that all about? Well, instead of using fossils to try to understand the origin of humanity, anthropologists are now turning their attention to the genetic makeup of human populations by looking at similarities and differences, the extent of similarities and differences, they can basically address questions like when did humanity originate, what was the original population size, how did humanity spread, and what they've discovered is a remarkable result. First looking at mitochondrial DNA, which traces the origin of humanity through the maternal lineage, through the female lineage, and what they discovered is uh, humanity must have originated from a small population of women in a single region, a single geographical region, and from there rapidly spread to fill the earth. Interestingly enough, all of humanity's mitochondrial DNA genetic fingerprint can be traced back to a single female individual, which is referred to as mitochondrial Eve by the scientific community. And what's the date? Uh, scientific, in the scientific literature, the date comes in under 150,000 years ago. Now, those dates have broad error bars, 20, 30, 40,000 years plus or minus. Uh, but there's some more evidence that indicates that actually that date should really be adjusted downwards towards the, the 50,000 year range. Okay, Hugh, we've got another one, and that's the genes of men have been analyzed. The ZFY gene on the Y chromosome passed down from father to son. What's that all about, and what did they find? Well, what they're finding there is that the men on planet Earth appear to be descended uh, from one or just a few individuals in one location with a date that comes in between 37 and 49,000 years ago. How does that square with the biblical record? Well, it squares very well. I mean, uh, you can take the Genesis 11 genealogy, and there's two individuals there that we can independently calibrate. Uh, Abraham, from historical records, lived about 4,000 years ago. The world was divided in the days of Peleg. Peleg's halfway through the Genesis 11 genealogy. And uh, carbon-14 dating establishes the breaking of the Bering Land Bridge, which I believe is a reference to the world being divided in the days of Peleg. That comes in at 11,000 years ago. You take those two dates, you presume that the lifespans in Genesis 11 are proportional to the passage of time. That gives you a date for the flood in the neighborhood of 25 to 35,000 years ago. And when you add on to it the genealogy of Genesis 5, you get a date for Adam and Eve in the neighborhood of 40 to 50,000 years ago. So the biblical date is consistent with the mitochondrial DNA date, which is consistent with the Y chromosome date, and all three of those dates are consistent with the big bangs of art, language, jewelry, and technology.